Good morning from your friends here at Bartlett and Wes. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our webinar will be 30 minutes along with time at the end for Q&A. During the webinar, you can send your questions through the chat window and we will answer your questions during the Q&A portion at the end of our time today. We will be issuing PDH certificates for those attending the live session that have elected to receive them. All of our webinars are available on demand after the live session at BartlettWest.com. We will be adding additional webinars in the near future and we encourage you to check that section on our website out as well. Today we will hear from Todd Kemker. Todd is a project manager and transportation team leader at Bartlett and West. He works with Department of Transportation and municipal clients to handle their roadway and bridge needs. Todd was the project manager on the award-winning Holt, Holt Street project in Mexico, Missouri that utilized compacted concrete pavement. Today, he'll be discussing how to streamline efficiencies with compacted concrete pavement. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Todd. You can take it away. Thanks, Rebecca. Appreciate everybody joining us today uh, for the webinar. Um, talking about compacted concrete pavement uh, used in uh, Mexico, Missouri. So I want to start with a, a poll question today just to get a flavor for um, what our audience may know about compacted concrete pavement. Uh, it is uh, a little bit different than roller compacted concrete. So uh, I think Rebecca is going to um, share this poll question. So again, the it's a little different than roller compacted concrete, so we want we figured some might be familiar with that. Um, some may may truly know uh, the difference between CCP and RCC. Uh, if so, uh, you may be should giving this presentation because I am not a, a pavement expert, but I played one on this project once. So, um, and then some may just wonder why you would ever compact concrete. So, want to give by a few minutes to. Again, get a feel for where everybody's at um, going into this presentation today. So it looks like uh, most people are uh, either wondering uh, who the heck compacts concrete or uh, maybe have heard of uh, RCC. Um, and then we got a few people that probably are um, pretty pretty knowledgeable about the topic today. So. Um, Hopefully, hopefully those don't stump me with too many questions, but I'll try and answer what I can today. Uh, so our project today is in, again, Mexico, Missouri. Uh, you see the green line there is Holt Street. Holt Street starts at uh, Green Boulevard on the east. Um, sorry, am I, can you, uh, can someone confirm you guys can hear me? Rebecca? Or Yes, I'm I am working with him. Okay. I'll work with Dylan, okay? Sounds, sounds good. I just wanted to confirm that wasn't a general issue. Okay, um, so yeah, Holt Street's the green line that you see there. Um, green Boulevard shown on the, is where it starts on the east and it heads west uh, to the Star. The Star is an ADM facility, which is basically a, a soybean um, grain elevator facility. Uh, so that's a pretty major uh, aspect of this project and was the real driver for looking at pavement types um, was th that facility. And Holt Street's basically a dead end road. Uh, so it was really the only way to to get there at least conveniently. Um, so it's about a quarter mile. The, the project was to completely rebuild the street, um, sidewalk and pavement, uh, rebuild the curb and gutter, just uh, again, a complete rebuild. And you can see that grain truck there, that just heavy damage was um, being experienced from the street, from the grain trucks. It was a concrete pavement. It had held up for many years, uh, served a good lifespan, uh, but was definitely needing to be replaced. Um, and as the city was thinking about what type of pavement to put back, the, these grain trucks were, were a big driver in that. So um, we thought about our typical pavement types. Uh, First, uh, you know, these are probably the types of pavement that you all are thinking about on a regular basis. Um, asphalt, uh, very fast to build. That was one of the things we were really interested in about asphalt was um, because this is a somewhat of a dead end street, getting 
getting the pavement down fast and getting it back open to traffic was pretty important. So we liked that about asphalt. The downside was the durability concerns, that flexible pavement that uh, asphalt is. We were concerned with rutting that would happen from uh, the, the large vehicles. Concrete uh, fixes that durability concern. It, it's just a longer lasting, you know, not, not that flexible pavement. We felt like it would hold up to the, this traffic better. The downside to conventional concrete is it just takes longer to build and it definitely takes longer to open back up to traffic, which was a concern of ours um, and, and the cities. So that, we talked a little bit about roller compacted concrete. If you're familiar with roller compacted concrete, I consider it somewhat of a mix of these two items of asphalt and it's kind of paved similarly to asphalt, but it you know behaves more similarly to concrete where it's using a dry mix, running it through more of a, a pavement and a, and a compaction method. Um, the downsides that typically I've heard from RCC, roller compacted concrete, is uh, the surface texture, you know, it's, it's just, Everybody's paying for concrete, they're expecting it to look like concrete that you're typically seeing on a roadway or a driveway or a sidewalk, and it, it doesn't. It, it has a more porous pavement uh, structure uh, on the surface and just doesn't have that clean surface that you're used to seeing from concrete. The other downsides I've heard is just the, the wavy profile that sometimes uh, you you can get. Um, the from the compaction process, sometimes you just do not get the smooth ride, the the pave or the smooth profile. So, um, compacted concrete pavement, uh, you could you could guess. Uh, we didn't pick any of these because the the uh, presentation is compacted concrete pavement, not asphalt. So um, we did choose a a fourth type, and it was somewhat of a hybrid of all this, uh, known as compacted concrete pavement. This is a newer. Uh, product it, developed by Andale Construction out of Wichita, Kansas, at least that's who I um, know of as, you know, first kind of developing a lot of the, these techniques. And essentially it is an improvement or advancement on roller compacted concrete. It's very similar, but it it's supposed to fix some of those issues that um, we, we just talked about, especially the way that it is finished. Um, it, again, it combines some of the asphalt and concrete techniques, and this is the first project that I'm aware of of it being used in Missouri. Uh, it was being built a, a similar time by Emory Sapp and Sons down in a Scott, Skitty, Scott City on a project for MoDOT. So um, similar time, but I, I believe this project was uh, completed a little bit before that. So um, I'll talk a lot more about what compacted concrete pavement is and what we learned about it throughout this presentation. For our project, uh, we chose to use eight inches of compacted concrete pavement and four inches of aggregate base. The eight inch thickness was discussed at length. Um, the thicker we can get it, the, the longer we felt like it was going to hold up, the, the more durable the pavement would be. However, there is a concern, especially when you start compacting this pavement, that can you truly get the compaction needed if you start going, if you start getting it too thick? Um, so we're trying to get to 98% of uh, laboratory densities when, when we're compacting this. If we get a 12 inch pavement section, there's concern, can you truly compact it and get all that to that 98% density? So the thinner we can get, the, the more likely we can compact it. However, then you, start having the long, uh, the durability and longevity concerns. So we ended up uh, working with the contractor pretty heavily and discussing what they could do. They do a lot of six inch, they've done eight and 10 inch, and we felt like eight inch would provide us the construction ability that we need and uh, the longevity of the pavement. So, uh, we, we started construction and we got into some subgrade concerns. This is not unique to uh, the Holt Street project, but it is definitely something that um, we, we felt like we needed to talk about because the compacted concrete pavement, it, it requires you to truly compact your pavement. Uh, and if we're doing normal conventional concrete, um, that compaction is not needed, but when you start having to compact against the pavement, if you kind of imagine a, a weak subgrade that's bouncing with you, you're not really able to compact it. You're not able to get the concrete to, to really squeeze together. Uh, so that the subgrade becomes more of a concern than if you're just bridging over it with conventional concrete. So 
we ran into subgrade that again, not completely unique to this project, but was something that maybe was a little more important on this uh, project. Um, it really slowed down construction. You can see this a picture of uh, the, the nearer side of the picture is actually the, the poor subgrade. And in the distance, you can s see some uh, evidence of trying to already fix it. They, they started by trying to pull out subgrade, put rock back like maybe you would typically see. Uh, they actually tried to use some of the um, geotextile materials to, to help bridge this material. Uh, they also did a lot of the um, pulling the pulling the uh, soil out, flipping it over, you know, and, and trying to let it dry out and then recompact it. So lots of different efforts were um, attempted, but it was really slowing construction down. And uh, Andale, who was paving it, uh, so we had a general contractor, Rad Baker, and then we had Andale Construction, who was our paving contractor. Andale was concerned about the uh, subgrade and just their ability to achieve that compaction if we did not get the subgrade um, achieved well enough. So we, we started talking about other options and cement stabilization was brought up uh, as an option that they they really wanted to consider here. Um, I, I actually have not used cement stabilization on a project up until this point. I've heard of uh, lots of times in mid-Missouri where we're mixing lime in with our subgrade. Uh, cement stabilization, similar type method, but just taking it to, to one stage further than mixing lime in. So how, how does cement stabilization work? First of all, you, you spread the, the cement powder along the over top the subgrade, and then you water it down. So you add, add water. That's what this truck in the um, picture is doing. You can see they've already spread the material down. They're watering it. And then in the distance, the there's a tiller that is actually tilling that cement, the, the watered cement in with the top 12 inches of the uh, subgrade. So that's just creating a, a much stiffer, a much better subgrade. Once that's all done and you have a good subgrade, then you just cut it to grade like you normally would. Um, so we we did that on this project. Uh, felt like we, we kind of went with this one. We got a good cost from, from our contractor that they wanted to share this uh, product with us and, and show this uh, ability to use cement stabilization. And the other reason we really went with this was that it was a product they were very confident in. And at some point, we just needed to keep this project moving. Um, Andale's a specialized contractor that they're not from mid-Missouri. They were coming in to do this paving and needed to get out. And at some point, if we kept messing with the subgrade, we were going to end up losing our shot of getting this paved. Uh, so we needed something that they had a large confidence in working. So yeah, the, the benefits uh, were speed. You can imagine it's just faster than having to go uh, take out all the material, wait for it to dry and put it back or to take it out, put in rock. It, this all happened in a day that they were able to mix the semen in. So much faster and be, it had none of the haul off that is required of taking that old material and, and hauling it off. So, and again, I, I talked about confidence in the success and uh, reasonable cost. So we finally got our subgrade ready, and uh, I believe that happened on a Wednesday afternoon. There was no rain in the forecast. It was, you know, things were moving great. We were planning on paving in the next day or two. And then uh, I'd left site, and about uh, 6 o'clock that night, I got these pictures. Um, the, I can tell you my heart sunk pretty pretty deep on, on this one when we had just been dealing with this subgrade issue for weeks and, and you get this picture. Um, again, a, a rain that was not expected. You, you all probably dealt with this similarly. Um, it, for 30 minutes, it just downpoured in this, right around this site, I guess, you know, not, not far away from this site, but uh, right around here, we had a really hard rain and uh, caused major flooding. So I was worried we're starting back at the beginning. And this is one, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the cement stabilization. And what really impressed me was we went from this picture to paving in two days. Um, it was just pretty phenomenal how quickly we were able to get this thing back open after and ready to pave after this. Uh, if we would have done just drying out the material and you know turning it over, getting a good dry subgrade, and then it rained, we would have been left, you know, waiting weeks to try and redry it out. Whereas the cement stabilized subgrade um, held up to the rain very well. So that's a 
kudos to Andel Construction and their, their methodology there. So we got a good subgrade, rain's cleared up. Uh, now, now what is CCP? What are we trying to pave? Um, again, CCP is com compacted concrete pavement and we start with a very dry concrete mix. Uh, so this is a picture of uh, compacted concrete pavement and mix in one of our hands. Uh, the people have asked me when I've started this presentation live, they're like, why are you uh, picking up after your dog without a bag? You know, the, it just, it does not look like concrete that you're used to seeing. You're used to seeing runny concrete, whereas this, this looks like more of a sand or a um, gravel mixture, not uh, concrete. So you take that dry mixture, and one thing you can see in this uh, picture is a dump truck. You're actually they're actually trucking it with a dump truck, not a not a concrete truck. So again, you're get, you're getting a lot of unique things already. And then what they're paving it with is a high density asphalt paver. Uh, so dumping the from the dump truck into the paving machine, and the the paver is actually compacting it. The concrete as it's paving. Um, this is a high density paver, uh, not maybe a more typical asphalt paver, which kind of starts specializing who could who could do the construction. But this paver has dual tamping bars on it that is actually compacting the pavement to about 95, sometimes even the 98% densities coming right out of the paver. Um, so it's it's very unique that people are walking on it immediately after it's coming out of that paver. Um, sorry, I had a phone call there. Um, so yeah, coming out of the paver, it's uh, it's very high density, and one of the things that that's doing is it is reducing the amount of compaction that is needed from the roller versus roller compacted concrete. Um, most of your density is coming from that roller compacting. The we are roller compacting this, but it is just to maybe get from 97% density to 98, not trying to get most of the density out of the roller. So that creates a, a much more smooth profile. So here's a picture, a zoomed in picture of the paver. And again, you can see that really dry mix um, just coming out of the paver there uh, on the, the back end of it, or I guess that's the front end with the direction it's moving. Um, it, it's again, very unique mix to the concrete. And that, that's the paver that has that dual tamping bars that is um, just getting a really high compaction immediately after it. And they're actually walking directly behind this paver, as I said. So once it's the initially laid, they are doing final compaction with the roller. Again, I, I mentioned that, but it's it's very minor compaction. It is maybe taking it from 95 to 98% density, um, but they, they do run over it with a roller just to verify that they are truly getting 98% density throughout the pavement. Then the, the finishing is done with a power trowel, which is what you, so you see the roller in the kind of foreground of the picture, and in the background you see that that power trowel. Um, unique uh, equipment, I have a zoomed in picture here. It's unique to transportation projects, in, in at least my experience and opinion. Um, I was not familiar with this piece of equipment. It, I, if this wasn't, uh, if this was more of a live uh, webinar or live presentation, I'd be able to show a video of it, but basically it's, it kind of operates somewhat like a hovercraft or I, I, I consider it kind of like a Zamboni machine that if you're familiar with ice rinks that are, you know, just making a really nice surface of the ice, that is what it's doing to our concrete. It's um, pulling up more of the paste and the, the moisture and really smoothing up the concrete on top. Um, so it's used very frequently in buildings. So a lot of you are probably familiar with it. I, I didn't have that building background, I had more of a transportation background um, where I'm not used to this equipment, but finishing floors on, on a commercial building or something, this is the same type of equipment that would be used. They do, there are spots that are gonna be low, you know, just like any type of pavement, you're gonna have spots that come out of the paver being a little bit lower depression type areas. So uh, they actually sprinkle out some some of the mix. Again, you can just see that really dry mix, almost like kitty litter type uh, feeling to it. Um, they, they sprinkle that in, go over it with the roller, then the power trowel and the same finishing process um, to compact that material in with the rest of the, the pavement. And then finally, uh, again, the thing that really starts making it 
different than roller compacted concrete is all this finishing that is being done. Uh, they're actually finishing it with a broom um, and, and tying it so that you're getting that same type of finish that you get on a, a true concrete pavement. Uh, so as if you're a uh, layperson and coming in, driving the um, project later, you would not ever know this compacted concrete pavement. It looks just like a conventional pavement project. Uh, so that really changes where it uh, elevates it and um, what the public sees. So to make some of this possible, they do have two admixtures that they use in it. One is a uh, powder that gets just added into the mixture to, to help make it more workable and to be able to reduce that water to cement ratio that, to allow it to be that dry mix. And then they, they do spray a finishing agent on top to, to just help with that whole finishing process and the power trail uh, process. So, some uniqueness is about this project. Uh, so we had a 26 feet, foot wide street that we were paving. So had curb and gutter on each side and we were paving 26 feet between the curb and gutter. Uh, they paved that all in one stretch. Um, so a lot of times you'd pave that you know, 13 feet at a time. They did use the paver, um, just one pull of the paver. Uh, part of that was the length that we only had 1400 feet in length. Um, this length is something that I think is uh, important to know on this project. We, our understanding is that they probably are typically paving 2,500 feet a day uh, with the same crew. So we're only getting 1,400 feet of length. We aren't getting the full day of pavement. So that really changed the, um, the way it was bid and did not allow us to get some of the uh, low prices and the economies that you would usually get um, on a project like this. And as I said, uh, something that was unique to this project was that they actually used the dump trucks to haul the equipment or haul the material in and to the paver. That was something that we'd probably change in the future. A lot of times, not, not that they haul them with a dump truck, but they actually loaded it directly into the paver. What that caused is the paver would have to stop and get loaded, then it'd go again, wait till a, another dump truck came, came in, it would stop, get loaded again. As you, anybody familiar with paving would, would probably realize that anytime you're starting and stopping that paver, you have some option, some opportunity for some deformations in your surface. So um, we would, typically what they would do is they would actually more pile up the material and use some type of transfer machine to actually transfer it from the pile into the paver. And that's what we would probably um, add to our specs in the future to make sure that happens and not allow it to start and stop. So results, uh, that's what we all care about, right? Is uh, what's, what's it look like in the end? Um, strength, that's one of the things that uh, compacted concrete pavement, you're really getting out of it is a um, stronger material, a, a better um, end material is some of the hope. Uh, you can see the, the strengths there w within a day, we were at over 3000 PSI. Um, and then the long-term strength, you know, we, we achieved over 6,000. So um, trying to hit 4,000 PSI, we're, we're hitting, we're getting that very quickly. Um, and actually this is one of the things that re we really were using it for is so that we could open that road. Uh, typically we would open a road when you're hitting about 3,000 PSI. So we could open that road the next day. That was the goal. I will say we didn't end up doing that. And the reason is the, the contractor actually came up with some very good methods of working with the uh, businesses in the neighborhood. Um, they actually did some paving ahead of time, more conventional methods uh, that allowed the um, traffic to from to get into the ADM facility without going using Holt Street. They, they built kind of an area that allowed them to access it differently. And once that happened and we had no longer the pressure from ADM and other place, other um, people in the neighborhood asking to drive on this immediately. We did take a very conservative approach and we actually waited uh, a week to open the road. Um, that was again, somewhat of a, doing this as a test project. We decided not to push the envelope here, but um, we truly believed we could have opened this within a day, uh, but we did not want to, once we had that all worked out, we said, let's, let's just be real conservative here. One of the, the downsides that we had on this project is that they did have to dime and grind the surface. Um, talking to the contractor, this is the first time they've had to do this. They've done 
uh, compacted concrete pavement many times and have not had to do this, but unfortunately the one that I gave present on, they had to diamond grind it. So uh, if you're not familiar with diamond grinding, basically it's taking a machine and actually grinding off the high spots um, of the pavement so that you get a smoother profile. So what, why do we have to do that on this project? Um, we, we had high and low spots that created a rough ride and why we think we got that uh, one, as a test project, we had all kinds of people on site that day. We did a workshop where um, we Bartlett West was out there, the contractor was out there, the city, MoDOT, FHWA, uh, the county, kind of all these people that were just interested in the pavement because it was the first time it was being done. They they wanted to see it. We wanted to talk about it, talk about why we'd want to use it again. Just watch the construction. So the contractor is trying to teach us how to do this and uh, walk us through the process. And because of that, I believe the contractor got a little lax on their, their QC process. They, they did not use the uh, maybe a 10 foot straight edge right out, out of the paver, um, trying to check grade and catch those high and low spots. Um, they just paved and we were busy watching all the cool stuff going on and, and did not uh, enforce that like we could have um, and we would do in the future so that's one thing I would watch in the future of make sure they're doing that straight edge it wouldn't have fixed it right away but we would have realized that there was a problem and had them fix it before they paved the whole thing the other things that we think or the contractor thought really caused this is um, the the water content in the aggregate so you're you're dealing with very low water to cement ratios so any fluctuation in them is is a bigger deal because um, you're you have so low to begin with that it doesn't take much water to start really having a more wet part of the mix and a more dry part of the mix. Um, and it rained recently, and they they felt like their aggregate pile, looking back on it, probably had some wet spots in it that when that they started getting in those areas, they probably had some areas that compacted better and some areas that didn't. Um, so I'd probably encourage people to watch that. Uh, water content in your aggregate and, and really QC that um, on future projects. So we did diamond grind this in the end. It's a nice smooth road, just does not have that surface um, that we would love to have. You can see in the, again, the foreground of that picture, you can see the, the concrete that looks like typical concrete. And then you see the, the lighter spots where it was di diamond ground. It just bugged me that we spent all this effort and uh, trying to create a great surface and then we grind it off. Um, in some of the areas, but overall it, it created a project that um, people are happy with and it drives very well at this point. So bidding, uh, obviously all this is great, but what's it cost? Uh, so we only had one paving bid on this project, at least that's our understanding. Uh, we had four bidders from the general contractor side, but Andale Construction was our only um, paving bid. Emory Sapp and Sons and some others can do this type of uh, pavement, but they were busy on some other projects, so they did not bid on this, um, and we were left with just Andale. I believe that that, that always affects, affects your bid a little bit when there's only um, one bidder. You know, anytime you have less competition, it, it's, it's hard to get great prices. Uh, so that's one thing that I affect, think affected it. But it, the things that maybe affected even more were just the uniquenesses of this project. Uh, so Mexico, Missouri, if you're not from around the central northern Missouri area, you probably don't even know where, where we're talking about. It's a, it's a little bit more of a remote area of, Me of uh, Missouri. So the mobilization from Wichita, Kansas to Mexico um, was not, was something we were paying fully for on this one project. And then we weren't getting the full pay, the full days worth of work. Again, I said there was 2,500 feet that they could pave in a day. They were done by two o'clock or something uh, that day. So they did not even get a full day in and you're paying for all the equipment, all those uh, laborers that it's required, but not getting the, the full day of their work. So I believe if we're paving 2,500 feet and especially if we're paving 5,000 or something, you would get much better prices. And I have seen uh, prices that bid tabs where this has been very much in line with asphalt prices. We paid uh, $73 a square yard. And I've seen prices in the uh, $25 and definitely under $30 a square yard range. So um, the other things that probably were a little bit unique here that 
we were told probably affect our price were the just very tight urban conditions, being a, not a lot of access points, a little bit more of a dead end road uh, in a neighborhood kind of started driving up costs. So um, those are things that I would definitely think about in the future. So what are some of the benefits of uh, compacted concrete pavement? Uh, Again, a, a faster paving operation. They paved all of this in a, a short amount of time, uh, very, much more similar to the way you do an asphalt road than a, a conventional concrete road. So we, we had a good check mark there for that faster paving operation. Also got, we got great strength out of it. Um, I showed the slide there. We got strength quickly and just good long-term strength out of this pavement. And my understanding, I'm, again, I'm not a pavement expert, but if I remember concrete classes from back in college, if we can reduce water in our concrete, we usually have you know higher strengths and long-term durability. So um, reducing that water and going with that drier mix, uh, we should have a good, good long-term product. The other thing that I think was probably as big a driver here as anything and might be a driver on projects you may be considering is that shorter curing time. If you want a concrete pavement and you want it to look like a concrete pavement, um, you can go a compacted concrete pavement and get that uh, curing time that, again, I felt like we could open the road the next day. People are able to walk on it immediately, so um, that was something when we are when we are on a dead end street and we're asking people not to drive on the road, at least they can walk, they can get out and, and go places. Um, we were able to park, tell them to park their cars in one area and have to walk from their house to that area. So being able to walk on it immediately is important. And emergency access, uh, what, what we were told and what I believe is we, if we needed a ambulance to come in here to, go to somebody's house if, God forbid, something happened during the project, they could have driven on this uh, without any issue. Now, it would have marred up the surface. You wouldn't have had that nice broomed finish anymore, but they could have driven over it, whereas uh, you take a conventional concrete, I, I guess you could do it, but you're, you're definitely causing some se serious issues and probably having to replace that section of, of pavement. Um, they could have done that in this case. So um, those were nice benefits that we saw so with that, I believe we have a, uh, a poll question on benefits of compacted concrete pavement that I wanted to see everybody's opinion on what do you see as the, the highest benefit? Uh, you know, again, we got strength and durability, uh, that reduction in cure time, potential cost savings, especially maybe compared to a um, typical concrete pavement, or um, a very valid thing is uh, you, know, you don't really see a benefit, just give you a, you like conventional concrete pavement. Uh, why, why are we trying to compact it? So I'm sure all of you are watching the same thing, but it, it appears uh, you're seeing the reduction in, in cure time as, as one of the big benefits. And um, that's probably the one that I leaned towards as well. So um, hopefully I didn't point you too much to that, but it, it makes sense that that's kind of where, where people are leaning. So, um, lessons learned on this project. Uh, getting ready to wrap up, and then we'll answer any questions. I, I see some of them filtering in, in as as we're speaking. So, um, lessons we learned: uh, one, lack of competition can affect your cost. That that's not something that's a huge surprise, but that's something that we definitely felt like affect our cost here. Um, we also believe that the cost would be more beneficial on a large, larger job. I would love to see this done on a larger project, and that's something that we've talked about with the city and, and others of trying to make this happen on, on a larger project so that we could see how the cost uh, comes in. Some things there that I, the next three are items there that I would try and do differently from the specs and the, the way that I um, allow this pavement to happen in the future. One, it, and this is all trying to get rid of the diamond grinding because that's the one thing that I have as a long lasting, man, I wish we didn't have to diamond grind that, that pavement. Otherwise, it, it turned out great. Um, I would not allow them to start and stop, just have it more of a continually loading process, uh, things that, again, you try and reduce on, on most paving projects. Um, I would have them QC in the pavement profile. That, that's in the specs, something that Andale admitted they do on a regular basis, and they, they just got caught up in the, the madness of that day out there. So I would um, make sure that doesn't slip through the cracks, and I would, I would make sure that they're QC in that pavement profile with a straight edge. 
Um, and then I'd watch the water content. To, I, I did not realize that, but that's what Andales thinks it was some of the problem with the, the wavy or pavement. Um, so if that's true, we should, we should be watching that and um, testing that a little bit more. Subgrade uh, requirements uh, is something to note from compacted concrete pavements. Uh, again, subgrade is an important thing on any pavement, but it's especially important when you're trying to compact this concrete to a, to a high density. If, if you want any ability to compact it, you better get a good subgrade. And we're able to do it with a cement stabilization here. There's lots of other ways to do it, but just make sure that you're, you're really paying attention to your subgrade. And then the final one I haven't mentioned yet uh, is utility conflicts. Um, because the way this paving process is being done, um, paving around utility conflicts is a little bit more difficult. So let's say water valves, manholes, other items like that, um, the contractor was concerned about their ability um, with this paver to pave around those items. Actually, the way we handled it is if there were manholes, rings, we actually took the ring and lid off, put plywood down, paved over top of that, and then they went out and they cut it out later and filled it back in with conventional concrete. Um, that ends up not being the greatest thing in the world from a, an aesthetic standpoint, or just you know you're paying all this for compacted concrete pavement, and you're you're having some spots where you're having conventional pavement around utilities. So um, be aware of that. The way we also handled it is on some of the side streets, because Holt Street, the main line pavement was didn't have too many utilities. We had some manholes, but other than that, it was it was pretty clear of utilities. But some of our side street intersections had lots of water valves and other items that we actually what well, the way we handle is we said go ahead do conventional concrete there around all those utilities and that entire kind of side street and then just do the compacted concrete pavement on your main line um, so those are things that I would be a, one of you would be aware of and consider in the future um, is if you have too many utilities you may compacted concrete pavement may not be the right option for you so I think we have one final poll question for today um, and it's, do you have an interest of using this pro product to compacted concrete pavement? Uh, so this kind of ranges from, you're going to be, you think this is a great thing, you want to try and use it. Second one is, uh, maybe maybe there's a spot for it in your town, but you, you're not going to be like searching it out as heavily. Um, the third one is, it's probably not for you, but you could see the interest. And then I'm not seeing anybody vote so far on, hey, this is, doesn't even seem to have a benefit. So I guess that's good. Um, Seems like most people are seeing some interest in it and, and um, think it might be something they should use in some locations. And, and that's kind of where we probably fall with this. Uh, I do not believe compacted concrete pavement is something you should be doing all, all day, every day. Um, but I think it may have a use. Uh, what I've understood some entities are going towards, um, especially in the Wichita area where Andel is kind of from, is doing more, this somewhat as a uh, alternate bidding option. Um, so bid bid your more normal pavement types, but bid compacted concrete pavement as an alternate. So that's something that may may be beneficial to you. So with that, uh, we're going to open it up for any questions, and I'm guessing there's some over here that Rebecca may point me to of uh, haven't been answered yet. But uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to use the chat box and ask. Thank you, Todd. We are at this point going to open it up for a Q&A and I have uh, several questions here to ask of you. Um, so I'll, I'll get those to you here shortly. As Todd mentioned, if you have questions, send them through the chat box. So we'll wait a couple minutes um, for all of those questions to roll through. Um, I do want to thank you for sharing your time with us today. Uh, thank you, Todd, for sharing your expertise with us. Um, so let me go to our first question here. Um, that is, um, oops, I need to scroll up here. Um, David Nichols is wanting to know if they brought in their own plant or was it batched from a local plant, the concrete? Yeah, that's a great question, David. Um, what what they actually did, and this was one of the things that took Emory Sap actually out of um, the opportunity to bid on this, is that they wanted to bring in a pug mill to um, to batch it and their pug mill was busy at the time that this needed to be paved. Um, what they did is they did use a local plant, but they actually 
worked with the local plant to basically shut it down for the day and they took over the plant that day. Let's say they used the used local plant, but basically made it their own and it was only producing um, the mix for the compacted concrete pavement that day. So I don't know, maybe maybe that's a mixture of the, of the two options that, that you gave of local plant versus bringing their own, but um, it is definitely something that you'd have to work out well with that plant. And I think the pug mill bringing in your own plants probably the more typical option. Thank you, Todd. We have a question from Robert. Do you need any reinforcing with C? We did not uh, use C uh, any reinforcing. Um, I guess not typically seeing reinforcement done on conventional concrete around here either, um, and definitely did not use any with the CCP. Um, I don't know if it can be done, but I, I would say you're, you're going to struggle with it. Um, trying to reinforce it because of that dry mix, uh, how it's going to get around all the reinforcement. And then as you try and compact it, will that reinforcement be able to stay in place? So I haven't asked Andale if they could do it, but we did not do it on ours. Thank you, Todd. Terry's has a question. Terry has a question asking if a CCP would be suitable for parking. I believe the answer there would be yes, Terry. Um, I, Having said that, so what I've seen typically of where roller compacted concrete pavement has gone is in our neck of the woods, it's gone more towards uh, parking lots. And so one of the things, again, if you get to the difference of roller compacted concrete and the CCP, um, CCP is going to be a little more specialized. You have to have that that the right paver for it. Um, so. You have to have that uh, contractor that can do it. And then the main things you're getting out of it are maybe a smoother surface and definitely a more aesthetic surface of looking like um, your conventional concrete. So I think that's the one thing you'd want to ask yourself is, hey, do I just allow them to use the RCC and deal with the, the surface that doesn't necessarily look like what I'm used to seeing? Or do I pay the additional money to, to get that different surface? So. Um, you may end up finding, hey, I'll just go with RCC, but um, and not try and do the special specialized items. But I do think it's very applicable to parking lots. Okay, Todd, I'm also getting some feedback. It, it is um, maybe there's some delay. So if you could repeat the question, some people are hearing you, some people are hearing me. So um, this next question, if you could just repeat the question before you answer it, um, that would be fantastic. Um, question is, would CCP be, um, oh, actually, I'm sorry, is curing and jointing similar to concrete pavement? Yeah, so I'll try and mute between questions, Rebecca. No, you told me to do that and I forgot. Um, yeah, is jointing is very similar. Um, we're basically, we did saw joints afterwards. Um, just like we would with a, a conventional pavement. Um, so very much uh, the same. Um, the question was whether jointing is similar. Um, curing, I guess, uh, curing is much different, Brad, uh, than conventional concrete pavement because, you know, again, it's a much shorter process, doesn't have all the water in it. So it's curing much, much faster um, than a typical uh, concrete pavement and we had good conditions so I don't know you know if I haven't thought through the maybe hot weather cold weather type um, cure I guess we had hot weather I haven't thought through cold weather um, curing uh, type conditions but um, as far as the jointing jointing is extremely similar to conventional concrete pavement Thank you, Todd. Question here, how does um, CCP compare to CRCP or NRDJ concrete in the durability of traffic? Well, I knew that this was going to happen, that some of you would be better at pavement than me, and this is the one that I, I will be honest, I, I'm not familiar with uh, all those additional pavement types that are uh, the acronyms there. Um, so I don't know that I can answer um, that question fully. Uh, I, As far as, again, the CCP, um, we did do some tests and Missouri University of Science and Technology did do some tests on this pavement. Um, Strength-wise, it came in very well. Um, Durability-wise, I was a little interested. Um, 
they they actually came back saying the freeze thaw durability wasn't um, great on this, and I don't know if there was something about the mix or the section that they tested because I would have expected reducing the water cement ratio so much that um, we would have had very high uh, freeze thaw durability. Um, it was maybe not doing air entrainment or something that you know really hurt our freeze thaw durability. So that's the one durability question that I still have that maybe didn't test the way that. Uh, we had thought it was going to test. Thank you, Todd. David has a question here. Were the curb and gutter sections replaced or were they existing? It appears it has to be used uh, with curb and gutters to contain the pavement and not slip forward like conventional pavement. Yeah, David. Uh, so asking about does were curb and gutter replaced and do you need curb and gutter, I, I think is the gist of the question there. Um, curb and gutter was replaced on this. This was complete. We rebuilt sidewalks, curb and gutter, driveways, everything. Um, so we did rebuild the curb and gutter here. I would think you could use the existing curb and gutter um, if you had curb and gutter. Um, I don't know if it has to have curb and gutter, but you definitely, yeah, you would, it would definitely work better, but there would have to be some way that, yeah, you could compact it and have some type of edge that it's not just pushing out or you just realize that you know, your last uh, little bit of concrete, like like on asphalt, maybe the last uh, edge of it's not as well compacted as the rest of it. But it's a good point that we liked having that curb and gutter kind of containing it all in and allowing us to compact it much better. Thank you, Todd. Just a couple more questions here. A uh, question from Wes asking if any drainage improvements were provided. Uh, the photo that you had shared uh, with a storm inundating, inundating the area combined with the wet subgrade suggests that maybe this was a large problem. Yeah, Wes, uh, as far as drainage improvements, um, the, the goal of the project was not necessarily to do overhaul drainage improvements. Um, it was a fairly flat section of roadway. Um, we did replace the drainage items that were there. I'm not going to hide that, yeah, there may be a need that there should be more drainage along the road, but it wasn't like it was way not meeting criteria that, that were checked, but again, wasn't necessarily the goal of the project, so we probably didn't check it um, as much as we would have if somebody wanted drainage improvements on, on a project, um, but we did replace the inlets and the pipes that were there. But as far as that rain event, it, it was a, I'll say, a extreme amount of rain in a short amount of time that you're probably always going to get some issues. And especially when um, those inlets are set higher than where the the subgrade is at that point. Um, you, know, you, you have ponding in the road that normally would be in the curb and go down the inlets. Um, you know, when your subgrade's lower than that for that short amount of time, um, you have some water, some drainage issues that are maybe a, a little bit more of a challenge in that temporary condition. Thanks, Todd. Michael's asking if the road is a larger width, does the CCP still need to be slip formed, i.e. inter? Yeah, so if the road is a larger at an intersection, so they did, um, I'm trying to remember how they did the intersection, but they did not do the slip form paver as much. Um, I guess what they really did around the intersection is they they did more of compacting with the roller. So that's the thing that you, you'd have to realize. Um, they basically use like a bobcat and spread the mix out, you know, again, it's a dry mix, so you're spreading it different than um, seems you used to. You do wonder why we're carrying concrete with a bobcat, but um, they spread the mix out and then they compacted it with the roller. Uh, so the difference of it in the main line is the main line was mainly getting compacted through the paver, whereas the intersections and uh, various areas like that were getting compacted pretty much solar, solely with the roller. Todd, what is the life expectancy of CCP compared to con conventional concrete? Yeah, Rebecca, the, the life expectancy is a, a good question and is part of the purpose of this project. It, it was a test project. Um, we got some funding from FHWA to help with this project to allow us to test this uh, 
this pavement. Um, and that's why we got University of Science and Technology involved to um, help test that. Uh, as far as we believe, as far as holding up to traffic, it's going to hold up very well because the, um, you know, all the strength characteristics, um, you know, they, they tested several different methods of, of strength. Uh, they, they were very good um, as we would expect from removing that uh, water to cement ratio or lowering that water cement ratio and compacting all this. The, the one thing that, again, I have some concern about that I didn't necessarily have two years ago when we were planning for this is the durability because the freeze thaw tests did not come back as high as I expected them to. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. You know, maybe there's some things that it didn't test well but in the lab, but it'll perform very great in the um, in real life or, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But strength characteristics, I think were great. And depending on where you are, how much freeze thaw concern you have may, may depend, determine how the lifespan of this. All right, Todd, one last question here. With the CCP bid alternates, do you include a schedule component? It seems CCP competes on schedule very well. So we have not, uh, the question was, should we include a schedule component if we're bidding alternates um, with CCP? Uh, we have not done it, so there would be a lot of questions of exactly what we would do. Um, so if you're familiar with, uh, I'm very familiar with the way MoDOT bid stuff, and, and they would bid more of, typically they would bid optional payment, and they would allow concrete and asphalt to compete together. Um, and just whatever the contractor picks. You could easily do that with this and allow it to be, you know, purely a, hey, contractor, go pick whatever you want. Uh, you can use asphalt, you can use concrete, or you can use CCP. Um, and I believe some entities in the Wichita area have gone more that method and just, it's a straight up, do whatever you want with it. Um, if you, but CCP is a complete alternate to them of, you can use it when you want. I kind of wondered would some people, some people have always, of our clients have wanted to pay a little bit more for concrete because they want that concrete road. Uh, so they're willing to pay a little more for it, um, but haven't been willing to pay as much as it takes to get to conventional concrete. So does this allow them to bid it as an alternate, um, have no schedule change to it, but have a different price and they see, hey, that price is 2% more or whatever the number ends up being, 10% more than asphalt price, whatever it is, and say, yeah, I want to pay that little bit extra to get to a better, um, what they may see as a better material. Um, so I think there's, I guess we bid lot, things lots of different ways and um, everybody has their own bidding strategies. Um, so I think you could definitely bid it without doing any type of schedule component, especially when you're comparing it to asphalt because I don't see much different other than maybe you want to wait a day instead of a couple hours to open a road. Thank you, Todd. Um, I'm not seeing any further questions at this time. So um, we do encourage you, if you have a question, you can reach out to Todd directly. His contact information is there. Several of you have reached out during the presentation today to send the slide deck to you, and I will be doing that. We will be following up uh, with PDHs as well. Um, if you experienced audio issues, I would encourage you to check out the recording. Uh, we continue to work with our uh, platform here. Our, our issues are not global, so trying to troubleshoot is a little bit of a challenge. Um, our recordings are completely solid. There's uh, not any overlap or delay. Um, so I do apologize um, if, if you experience that. Uh, please uh, check out the recording, which is available on our website. Um, one last check here, no further questions. So I want to thank everyone for joining us and to have a great day. And we hope you can join us in the near future for another webinar. Thanks so much. Have a great day.